Previously on Baseball Minnesota. I'll tell you one thing, we got a bunch of babies on this plane. I talked to my dad last night. He's coming for the 4th of July series. It turns out Daryl Strawberry said so long to the Saints with this home run last night. The straw left the Saints signing a million dollar contract to play for the New York Yankees. I think he's a pretty fierce competitor, and I think he really wanted to go back to the Yankees in the very beginning. I see you. All right. I was sad, but I was happy. This is what we've been hoping for and working towards for so long. I want to prevent a letdown, but uh, when you lose a, a powerful force in your lineup like that and that type of uh, leader by example, then I think the club's going to suffer just a bit. I thought it was pretty cool that he has two bats sitting there for us to sign for him. Yeah. All the autographs that he signed for everybody else, and now he's got two bats and he wants his team, his St. Paul Saints, to sign it. Well, you told me what he said yesterday. You wanted to play today because he said it wasn't fair to the fans. That... No, and you got it. Yeah, he, he told us. me that. He said he wanted to stay. Every time he came to the plate, I had my stopwatch and I get his hang time on his home runs. How long were they? The best one was 7.1 in Madison to the top of the tree. From the time that ball hits a bat to the time it hit the top of the tree was 7.1 seconds. And so last night at Gabe's, I told him, I said, Straw, I said, I'm going to watch your games on TV. I'm going to have my stopwatch. And I said, you better give me some hang time. <laughs> he started laughing. They got a bargain, $300,000. But they, they do have his option for next year if he does well and they pick up his option, then he can play for over a million next year. Yeah. See, this is the um, New York Yankees schedule. The Yankees are very spontaneous. I think he's excited because he was um, on the field and they said, come on. So he called me and said, I'm on my way. It's really nice. They're really family oriented, really just nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna miss it. Really, truly, I am gonna miss it. We both are gonna miss St. Paul. He contributed a lot more than just the numbers he put up on the field with his leadership off the field, uh, his camaraderie with the team. Since Darrell's departure, my main concern, the one thing this club misses to me is a leader on the field. You know, act professional. That's all I'm asking. Just act professional on the field. Don't be throwing things. It's embarrassing to me to watch Twig reach out for guys' helmets and then they fire him down at his feet or throw him over his head. Life is just too short for me. I'm too old to be doing this and uh, being a babysitter. So, let's get it. Center field and back. Here we go. Every guy's got to be professional. I mean, there's some guys on the club that... Uh, they play hard every night. They go about their business. They're, you know, they're not going to get anybody's face. My dad's coming to town today. Uh, him and my sister. Beautiful. I give sole credit to my father for making sure that I was going down the right path. See, because my father has been in coaching for like 22 years, but he saw that I had a talent in baseball and always encouraged that to, to be a positive point in my life. He, he loves... All the oh, ins and outs of the game, the I tell you. A perfect afternoon for baseball here at Midway Stadium. Doesn't get much better than this, and another full house on hand to spend their 4th of July with us. Yeah, 
For a fifth, you did I, it You know what? I, I get, I get nervous in front of talking to people. That's all right. That's everybody in the country does. God, I might go. I might blank out, huh? I was like, Daryl, give me, give me your. What do you want me to? What are you, your ideas? You know, because he wanted something. You gotta get going yeah. down there. Yeah. Okay. The game's about to start. Yeah. Unless you want to play right field. Oh, sure. Okay. I told your mom's gonna come back and so. play right field. Yeah, yeah. Well, you nervous? Attention, fans coming onto the field. Cherie Strawberry and Mary with Ron Strawberry. I'm here on behalf of Daryl. He, he felt bad that he had to just leave without saying goodbye. To the St. Paul Saints organization and fans, my family and I would like to thank you for your kindness and open arms, for allowing us to believe in a dream and help make it happen. To Marty Scott and my teammates, thank you for your support and encouragement. I love you guys and I will miss you greatly. Thank you and God bless Daryl Strawberry and family. have Scott Stewart on the hill for St. Paul. And after seeing the oldest player in the league last night throw a dandy, Scott Stewart's got a tough second act. Jack Morris with that wonderful three hitter last night, Greg, which almost got overlooked in all the Daryl Strawberry stuff with Strawberry signing with the Yankees. Left-handed hitting Chris Powell against the left-hander Stewart. He delivers and he hit him. Hit him on the, looks like the right knee and Powell is down and definitely shaken up. Scott Stewart just struggled early, never really got into a flow. He walked Lubier eight straight out of the strike zone. He's walked three of the last four hitters, and the Canaries lead it 3 0. A couple of mental mistakes have Stewart in a big jam here in the top half of the first inning. He's still got a long way to go. His arm doesn't match up to, to the stats. And and activity down in the St. Bullpen as Dan Thompson gets up and starts to throw. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he came to see me play. You just live through the kid right now, and you just, you know what he's all about, and this is it. Scott Stewart's night is complete after four innings of work. It was his control that got him in a lot of trouble early. Scott Stewart was his own worst enemy. He made a fielding mistake and then got a little bit wild with the walk. He just uh, made it worse by getting mad at himself and things just never came around for him today. Oh, well, we talked about how the Saint offense would react today without Daryl Strawberry here. The last thing that you wanted to do was put the extra burden of a three-run deficit on them. If I didn't care, I wouldn't say anything. I know you're better. Don't let them take them out of your game. You're not going to throw a perfect game every time. But you know what? Every pitch should have a meaning. So don't just waste it. You, you could have got out of that inning with one run. You know? It's over. And the Saints will turn it over to Dan Thompson here in the fifth inning. First pitch strike. Come on, baby. First pitch strike. I'm like a perfectionist, you know, and I get that from my father. I have to improve each time. All he needs is the work. It's all a pitcher needs. Powell's running and Thompson has it. Powell obviously is trying to get an extra bit of a step and Aaron Kennedy applies the tag over at first base. You know, it's, it's interesting sometimes when you think you've got a pitcher red and he looks home, he looks at first and then usually goes home and I think Thompson kind of threw him for a little bit. He thought he had him measured. 
Let's see, this is good for him. On the 4th of July, he's doing some magic for us. It's nice. One one. Perez lays down a butt. If it stays fair, it's going to be trouble. Thompson throws and got it. I've never seen that. That's Brooklyn. That's Brooklyn. A little bit of a highlight reel effort there by Thompson. The magic is back. Nice job. Watch this again, and if Thompson tries to throw this the conventional way, he's going to hit Perez with the throw. There's nothing else I could do. Oh, awesome. Final line on Thompson, an impressive outing today. Four innings, two hits, one run. Three walks, three strikeouts through one wild pitch, 68 pitches. The total. See, the funny thing is, is the only reason why I would have even, like, split second thought about is, uh, I was doing the bucket today. I was just screwing around, just picking the balls up and trying to, each time trying to flip them back behind my back. And then, otherwise, I would have never, it would have never even come to my head. See, screw around sometimes and <laughs> it pays off. And the final score here this afternoon, the Canaries win it by a final of seven to three. The way he's got to look at it is that this is the beginning of, you know, his summer stand. This is what he's got to do every day. He's got to go out and do that. Got to do it again and again. Dude! Unbelievable. It took my breath away. Hanging in that last inning. Hey, that's what you always do. Yeah. We're hanging in there. Don't give me that. And what are you going to do the next time? Same thing. Yeah. It was the trip of my life. Uh, that's not the great thing it was. No. <laughs>
Well, a pleasant good evening, everyone, and we greet you from Fargo, North Dakota. I don't know about the weather. They say battle three between hours. the two first place clubs in the league. Fargo Moorhead with an 18 12 record, their first place in the West, and the Saints, the same record, 18 and 12. They are first place in the East. All set with ground rules. No, but who cares? There's no break. No break. In close. If it hits the bars in the cement in the front, play it. Have the guys in the bullpen, if they sit on the chairs, to come around to the break on this side. Okay, okay everything's out except the glove. On, yeah, Captain Morgan. My guys will bring them down. Doug Simonick over at third base coaching box. <laughs> there, Chuck Jackson made a friend. How about travel? How's this for anonymity? When he got introduced before the game, he was introduced as Chuck Jackson. <laughs> you like this league, good league. <laughs> Welcome to the Northern League. Too bad we didn't have more money for the veterans. So Chuck Jackson wearing number 10 in his first at bat ever for the St. Paul Saints. He's a right hand batter, Greg, six feet, 190, 33 years old. He's Goes a veteran. Back. Here's the pitch and Jackson drives it high and deep towards center field. Backing up is Matt Rundles, still going back. Just a couple of steps short of the track out near the 408 mark, he puts it away, but it's enough to get Bruett in from third base and the Saints increase their lead to three to nothing. And we have the rain starting to come down. Saints lead it three to two, runners at first and second, nobody out. We are in the bottom of the fifth and it's raining here in Fargo, not all that heavily, but the lightning strikes have caught the attention of the umpires. Here's the pitch from Manfred, it's low, ball four, he walked him and they're loaded up. Now Ray Korn, the Saints pitching coach and resident Ground crew expert is out there. He wants something done with that pitcher's mound, and the ground crew is going to have to get their rakes out and do something about that. You know, I just don't like Marty coming out in the middle of our rally and stopping the game. That's what me off. When we're slipping and sliding out in the same boat. Jim Manfred with the bases loaded and nobody out. And an 0-2 count on the hitter delivers. A hot shot towards third for Jackson. He dives at third to try to double him off. Did he? Yes, he's out. A double play. A line shot to Chuck Jackson. And then he dove and hit his glove on third base. That's a great play by Jackson. That'll make him popular among his new teammates. The pitch from Jim Manfred right back up the box. A diving great play by Carlton Fleming. He stretched out on the outfield grass and grabbed that one before it could become a base hit. Oh, some great defensive plays by the Saints to wiggle out of a big jam here in the fifth. Now, if you're the Saints, you can go into whatever delay tactic you want if you think that can get you somewhere. Yeah, we're in trouble. Couldn't stop it after the inning. watch. Hey, Brian, we're staying here all fing night and playing this game. You're not calling the game now. I'll stand here at midnight if I got it. So fing dig in. 3 in. 2 on Fleming. Runners hold. Payoff pitch. Swing and a mess. And Fleming's bat ends up past the Saints dugout. Now, now let's see what we've got here. The home plate umpire is going to go down and talk it over. Brian Lightning behind the plate, John Ramsey, and we're going to stop it right here, Greg. We are stopping right here. Damn it! Should have stopped it in inning four, Brian. I'm a Mike, I'm a Fenner, my choice. So we will have a rain delay go, here go. in Fargo Moorhead. Go! I can't get it. Let's hear it for the tarp crew, Dallas crew. Where's the baby pool? <laughs> it's lightning right here. We are in a rain delay here at uh, the brand new stadium in Fargo, North Dakota. It's a beautiful stadium. The Saints lead three to two.
Put some right here. Some right here behind you. Try to tip the clumps out because the ball's going to hit that. Let's go. Time is of essence. Time is of essence, not a fucking line. He said, if it goes anything, he says, anything, anything else you fucking need? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, time is the essence. And you got one foul lines. I said, well, what's the umpire supposed to do with the ball? You guys bitched about a foul call when they hit lines out there. Ice him to the set, and the pitch to Chris. Ground ball hit towards second, slow roller. Majita tags the runner out, throws to first, and he threw it over the first baseman's head. And apparently the runner was safe at second base. Doug Sebedek is coming out to discuss it. Doug is upset, and I get the feeling he wants to be ejected here. He didn't tag him! He 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 him! And he is. Mission accomplished. Don't f***ing walk away from me, you little f***. Hey, you got you did you tag him. You tag him. He did not f*** him. Did, he did what not f*** him. What you guys watching? Both did of not tag him. You're f***ing horse. Get out. You I already, stink. You're done. You don't even deserve the umpire in That's all right. I'm giving You know right. why? Because you're f***ing ugly. All right. You piece of s***. Well, he went out there with a purpose. I'll say this to the umpire. He right away said no tag. Said he missed it. And Mr. Semenek's night is done. Before the game, I shook hands with him and said, hey, congratulations. You and I are the only two managers not to get thrown out of the game. Oh, there's only one left now. You know, I don't know why you have to get your players fired up by getting ejected. You know, they, they should be fired up anyway. They got a uniform and they're getting paid for something they're supposed to have fun doing. The Saints win a nail biter tonight. They hang on to defeat the Red Hawks seven and six. There's not one guy that I wouldn't trade places with right now, even though it would be a big unknown and even though it's a Northern League player. Because once you're through playing and you can't team? play anymore, you, you miss it. I mean, I would love to be able to get out there and do those things now. So there's not one player that I wouldn't wouldn't trade places with that opportunity again. Hi, baby. Okay.